Somebody told me when I got into this business, I should incorporate myself for my taxes. I should be a one-person corporation. So I did that. Became a one-person corporation. And then I was between gigs one year, and I tried to get unemployment. And they told me to get unemployment, I was going to have to fire myself. I never fired anyone or been fired. Now i got to do both. I didn't want to do it. But then I took a second look at my financial performance from last year, and uh, I think I had it coming. <laughs> Turns out I was the weak link in my corporation. <laughs> Clearly, I had to go. So I called myself into the home office in the kitchen. <laughs> Apparently, there have been rumors going through the hallways that something was going down. <laughs> Rumors of me showing up in pajamas. And then I did it. I let myself go. I didn't take it well, I'll be honest. I'm not proud of this, but on the way out, I stole some stuff. I did. Yeah. I thought I earned it. Good morning. It is Friday, May the 6th, 2022, the end of another work week, and this is Cafe Devo coming to you almost live from First Congregational Church located at the point of Saginaw and Washington Streets right here in the heart of beautiful downtown Duran, Michigan. I'm Pastor Steve Wood. That's my pal Bugsy over there in the corner. And if you listen real close, you can hear my coffee is just about ready behind me on the Keurig. I hope your Friday is going well. Hey, before we get started with this morning's devotion, we want to send out birthday wishes to one of the men connected with our congregation. John Pratt. Hey, John, it's your birthday. God bless you, my friend. Everybody join me in wishing John a happy birthday. Maybe drop him a note. Let him know that we love him and wish him the best of days. And all together we say, happy, happy birthday. birthday. As we continue reading this morning from the book, Truth for Life, it was written by Pastor Alistair Begg, copyright 2021, The Good Book Company. Philippians chapter 4, verses 14 and 15. It was kind of you to share my trouble. And you Philippians yourselves know that in the beginning of the gospel, when I left Macedonia, no church entered into partnership with me in giving and receiving, except you only. To be a Christian is to be a receiver and a giver. Many of us have been educated on the importance of having a retirement account to which we make consistent contributions. Yet while it would be wrong for us to completely dismiss the matter of making sound financial decisions, as believers we must also consider our giving and investing in light of eternity. In his letter to the church in Philippi, the Apostle Paul commended his brothers and sisters in Christ for their willingness to share his trouble, a partnership that included the sharing and giving of material gifts. The Philippians' generosity was outstanding in that it stood in direct contrast to the absence of such support for Paul from other churches. Although their church was a fledgling congregation, the Philippian believers had determined from the very outset that they would support the apostle in his gospel work. Their support for Paul was not only outstanding, but long-standing. The Philippians' giving was not sporadic. Rather, it was marked by consistency and continuity as they sought to help him with his needs again and again. Although a decade had elapsed, since Paul first preached the gospel to them, these men and women were still committed. Their giving 
was not the result of a one-time emotional surge, nor the product of external manipulation. This early church gave in the awareness that everything they possessed had been given freely to them. Indeed, in sending out the disciples, Jesus had reminded them that because they received without paying, they were to give without pay, Matthew 10, verse 8. In other words, the foundation of sacrificial, generous, resourceful partnership is the grace of God. That foundation is established when we understand that all we are and all we have, all our resources, our gifts, our talents, all of it is from Him. We do not all have the same gifts or the same capacity for giving. And monetary giving is certainly not the only avenue for benevolence. Yet, since we are all recipients of what God has given us, we will all be those who look to give to others. God has purposefully put his people together in such a way that we are each to give according to the grace given us. Romans 12, verse 6. We should not give simply because we've been manipulated or because we listened to a stirring song that brought us to the point of tears. Nor should we give because we'll get our name on a building or on a bench. No, we should give for one reason and one reason only. Because God has so freely and so generously given to us. For further reading, check out 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 1 through 15. Now, Lord, we come to you on this day and we're grateful for it. We thank you for a Friday, for the gift of life, for the chance to serve you. And we ask that we would do that in a way that's pleasing to you. Guide us, Father. Watch over us and direct our steps. Watch over the things that we think and the things that we say and help us to show your love. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, that's going to do it for us on this Friday edition of Cafe Devo. Thanks for joining me. For now, this is Pastor Steve Wood signing off. God bless you all, and I'll see you tomorrow. Music